Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel and welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And we're going to be talking about troughs in the upper atmosphere. Are they digging? Are they lifting? Is there a positive tilt to the trough? Is there a negative tilt to the trough? And how all of those different things affect the sensible weather here at the ground. So let's move on to case one here, if you will. And we're going to take a look at a trough like this. Now, we, we talk about at the surface, we look at isobars, which are lines of equal pressure. And many of you know that the tighter they are, uh, tighter packing they are, or more tightly packed that they are, the stronger the wind blows. Okay. Well, in the upper atmosphere, it's pretty much the same thing. Although instead of looking at lines of equal pressure, we look at lines of equal height. How high do you have to go up to reach a given pressure in the atmosphere? And 500 millibars is sort of a standard level that we look at because it tends to give us an idea as to what the steering currents are like up there, which then dictate where the systems down here at the ground actually go. Okay. So just imagine that this trough is sitting over some geographical region and the trough axis is like this. And think of the trough axis as being uh, the line between where the winds shift from northwest in the upper atmosphere to southwest in the upper atmosphere. So all the winds on this side of the trough up in here are from the northwest and on the other side of the trough they're basically from the southwest. So the axis basically divides those two and it's ahead of these trough axes that you get upward motion in the atmosphere between the trough here and the downstream ridge up in here. On the west side of the trough this is where you get sinking motion and you tend to get qu uh, clear skies and fairly quiet weather. Okay so let's move on ahead now. Now Notice that these lines are more tightly packed up in here than they are anywhere else in this trough, okay? And imagine a block of wood perpendicular to the flow oriented like this. Now, if on one end of that block of the wood the winds are blowing really, really strongly, but up here they're much weaker, then that block of wood is going to start to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So we're generating vorticity or spin in the atmosphere simply by nature of the fact that the winds are stronger up here than they are farther south and so we have like a maximum of vorticity up here just to the north of where these lines are tightly packed. So in a sense what we're doing then is transporting higher levels of vorticity into the trough axis than currently exist and so we would expect this trough to deepen or amplify with time and therefore would probably produce even more upward motion ahead of it. Okay, so this is what a digging trough looks like. <clears throat> now, let's move on to a trough that looks a little bit different. We still have our trough axis like this, but now the strongest winds are on the east side of the trough axis as opposed to the west side. Okay, so now this generation of vorticity by the tightly packed lines is leaving the trough and not coming into it. And so it is, in a sense, taking the high levels of vorticity away from the trough axis as opposed to it being replenished or increased from this side. And so in this case, we would expect the trough to weaken with time. OK, so if you're let's say you're down in here somewhere and uh, you, you're looking at this trough to your west and you're saying, oh, that trough's going to move eastward and affect us. It may not because all these lines that you see here are going to be retreating as the trough lifts out. And so if you're down in this region here, you may never see much effect from that trough, uh, if any effect at all. All right. So now let's go ahead and talk about tilt. OK, now this is what we call a positively tilted trough where the axis of the trough runs from northeast to southwest. OK, now. We have the trough down here, and then way up to the upper right in your screen is the ridge axis where the lines start to curve the other way. But there's a really long distance between that trough and that ridge. So the upward motion is spread out over a long distance. And so you may still get significant amounts of precipitation uh, east of that trough axis, but the chance of you getting a really, really deep, intense area of low pressure where there are isobars out the yin-yang on all sides of it, that's not likely to happen in a situation like this. But let's go on to case two here on the tilts. This is what we call a negatively tilted trough, where the trough axis is running from northwest to southeast. And so now you have the trough here 
you have the ridge here, and there's a much, much shorter distance between that trough and the ridge than there was in the positively tilted case. So now you've got all this upward motion, intense upward motion, concentrated in a small area, and these are the situations where you tend to get rapidly deepening cyclones uh, here at the surface of the Earth, where you know the pressure is just falling like mad in the middle of this thing, and there are more and more isobars and more and more wind and more precipitation and yeah, everything's going crazy, all right? So the negatively tilted troughs are the ones that are most likely to uh, produce a scenario like that. So these are just some of the things that we look for. Uh, is the trough digging? And in the digging case, you have the strongest winds coming into the trough from the northwest. Or is it lifting? Are the strongest winds now on the east side of the trough and it's going to lift out or retreat and weaken? And then what's the tilt of the trough? What is that distance between the trough axis and the downstream ridge axis? Is it a long distance or is it a short distance? And that will give us a much better idea as to whether or not we're going to get an intense cyclone, uh, very concentrated in one area, or whether or not we're going to have precipitation spread out over a long distance, but there may not be all that low a pressure anywhere along that zone. Okay, that's it for today. Hope that was mildly interesting. Uh, we'll be uh, back with another bonus weather video next Tuesday, and we'll have another daily weather update for you coming up later this afternoon. So we hope you'll join us for that. And uh, that's about it from here. So you all have a good weekend, and we'll talk soon.